everybody in between. Welcome once again to the Sinsha Podcast. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. And I'm Crux. Outstanding. And uh, on tonight's show, we're going to go on the road again. We're going we're gonna to talk about uh, about doing tech work on the road. Uh, in Mostly in the before time, but, you know, maybe we'll mm-hmm. talk about what's coming up. Maybe sometime in the distant future, you yeah. know. <laughs> That's we'll right. We'll get in our flying cars and <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll uh, we'll fuel up with the Mister Fusion and uh, and head out on the uh, on the hoverways or whatever. Where but, we're going, we don't need roads. That's right. But you know what we do need? We need a shop. So uh, the Sin Shop is a, a maker hacker space located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now uh, we offer tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Uh, we're currently closed for renovation, so you're going to have to wait a little bit to come check out the shop. However, our members are currently working as hard as they can to get the shop back in action just as... <laughs> we're shot that segue. Uh, to get the shop back in action just as soon as they possibly can. So if you're in the Las Vegas area and you'd like to help, join our Discord and check out the shop build-out channel to see what you can do to help get the shop back in action. Now to join our Discord, you head over to sinshop.org forward slash Discord. And to make sure that you're notified of our future events, including virtual ones just like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. And of course, to find out more about the shop in general, you can head to just plain old sinshop.org. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that I do not miss at all. And that is working on the road. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, for the longest time, the job I worked at that involved no travel whatsoever, well, that's not entirely true. Involves some travel, but it was like maybe a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of times, depending on the location, like, oh, if it happened to me in Kansas City, well, then I'd be the one volunteering to that because they have really good barbecue that I like. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I'd go on that one and then let like someone else handle like Oakland or something. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there is no love in Oakland. But uh, yeah, allow myself to introduce myself. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. Uh, so so let's see. Your your previous job, you actually had to split where you where you live long term. Um, I I lived in Vegas. I but I w- I traveled so often uh, to the L A area. Um, it's essentially every other week. So I would be here for a week and the weekend and then like monday through friday the following week i would be in la Uh, so i actually had an apartment out there uh just because it made things easier in some aspect aspects because there was less stuff that you had to transport yeah Uh, still had to like transport my laptop and things like that um or laptops since i was in the tech field so did you fly or drive? Uh, usually flew. Yeah. Uh, occasionally I would drive because it was, it's just close enough where sometimes that makes sense. Uh, if, if I had a reason where I needed uh, uh, my truck while I was out there, then, then I would, I would drive. Otherwise I would fly because that's a lot easier. I can just, you know, get up morning of Monday, um, head to the airport and then, you know, it's an hour 45 minute flight, I think. Yeah. And then you take an Uber to the office and there you go. go. Yeah. And then I usually fly back like Friday night. So that sounds, that sounds like a pain in the butt though. It it was brutal. Uh, It made for Monday being like a really long day because, you know, I was getting up at like maybe four in the morning. Oh, Uh, that must suck. But then I wouldn't get done with the, my day until like maybe seven, eight sometimes. Yeah. So, so that was a long day. Yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> and I usually had insomnia the night before. So like I maybe got an hour of sleep sometimes. Yeah. I don't know what's up. To, I, I do the, I do exactly the same thing. I'll, I'll like, uh, you know, I, I work from, from four in the morning until, uh, well, sorry, I work from six in the morning until uh, three in the afternoon. Right. So I usually get up around four and then, uh, I'll have to, uh, you know, I gotta like reprogram myself like on the Friday night streams. Cause I'm usually up until like, you know, 12 in the morning, at least at a bare minimum, usually the more like three. 
And so then I'll get all screwed up for the weekend and then have to suddenly like flip back around on Sunday night. No, it's no good. Nick. Yeah. My, my brother, uh, works for the post office and, uh, he has the same thing. Like he has a job where he has to, I think he leaves the house at like four thirty, five o'clock and, uh, to get things like ready for, you know, the day of post officing or whatever they got at the post office. Uh, <laughs> The daily so, yeah, and then thing. he gets done by like around three or so. But he's not a morning person. He he tends to be a night owl. So yeah. So when the weekend comes around, then he ends up screwing up his sleep schedule. And so I used to work for for a major major retailer, and uh, we used to uh, I used to install networking equipment. And what they would do, I would go down to Arkansas. So that tells you pretty much who I'm talking about. I would go down to Arkansas and they would hand me uh, a, a truck uh, with a trailer, a two man lift and a binder and a, full of parts. The truck was full of parts. They'd hand me a two man lift and a binder full of stores. So, and, and they basically slapped you on the butt and said, go get him tiger at that point. And so, you know, Oh, okay, great. Where do I got to go? California. Oh, okay, great. And you gotta be there in the morning. What? <laughs> that was, that was uh, more than one rollout went pretty much like that. Huh? Yeah. Uh, driving, yeah. driving safely was not their thing. That, that seems less than optimal. No, it, it, it really, it really was. It really was. I had one week where I had 106 hours on my timesheet and they were like, is there even 106 hours in the week? And there was just barely. Uh, but that was a, uh, particularly problematic installation. But, uh, those, yeah, those crazy 90s. Yeah, there's no way in hell I'd be able to do that. Now. Well, actually, that, I think that was early 2000s. But uh, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, like the last job, you know, I it was mostly flying. So that that wasn't too bad. I lived near the airport. And yeah, I think the, the longest part of the commute was essentially... Yeah, sometimes waiting for the Uber could be lengthy, depending on, you know, getting the Uber and then going into the office on California for your ways was, you know, could take a while. But I was hard. on the clock at that point, so it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, I clocked so much overtime. It was ridiculous at uh, do, doing that on the road because I was, I was on the clock on the road, too. So that was that was pretty nice. I didn't get overtime on the road. I don't know why. I have a feeling yeah. we got screwed, but I mean, I, I guess I was salary, so I was never really actually technically on the clock, but whatever. Yeah. yeah right. But anyway, uh, when I was working for them, uh, it, uh, it was much more a, uh, a, a driving thing. Like I had this one job where I got stores again. This is, so I lived in St. Louis down to Arkansas and they're like, okay, so for this one, you don't, you don't even, you're not even getting a truck. I'm like, okay. They're like, we're going to give you a, uh, what was it? Like a Chevy cruise or a cobalt or something like that. Hey, thank you, Brio Fons. We appreciate it. Um, so, uh, they, they said, okay, yeah, yeah, no, you're just getting this, uh, this little car. I'm like, okay, great. So I hop in, I hop in the car and I'm like, okay, what's the plan? Okay. You're going to do this, this rollout. I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? Go there and plug in a patch cable. Like, what? And it's in Michigan. What? And we need you there tomorrow. What? <laughs> so, yeah. So that yeah. was a drive. So yeah, I I drove. They, could, through... they couldn't just talk to someone on the phone and say. Apparently not. The cable. It looks like this. It goes into this equipment. I had something. Here's on a the picture order. of the, the thing. Yeah. No. 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 I had something somewhere on the order of like, for that rollout, I had somewhere around 30, 30 stores. And I started in Michigan, but I didn't stop in Michigan. I did all kinds of stores in Michigan, all the way up to the Mackinac Bridge, which is kind of cool because I got to see that. That was neat. Uh, yeah, and, I've I've driven over it many a time. Yeah, that's right. That's that's your old stomping grounds, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, all the way up there, uh, all through Ohio, all through Pennsylvania, some in West Virginia. And at each store, it was the same. It, it literally took me longer to find a manager to fill out the stupid paperwork than it did to do what I had to do. I had to plug it in, 
plug it in, and we're done. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone's looking for a really easy job that will keep you on the road for months at a time, like there were there were guys there. That's, that that surprises me with them though, because I've known people that work there, and like it seemed like every project got proposed of how does this save the company money, and paying someone to travel to plug in a patch cable does not sound like it's saving anyone any money so here's the thing that i learned about the corporate world is that it depends on what bucket it's coming from if you're paying a company who's paying a bunch of contractors to do a thing and they're just like you want us to do this thing okay great it's going to be dollar amount and that's it then the sky's the limit but if you have to hire an employee or you have to, to manage the parts or whatever yourself, there's no, they have very little interest in that, like in general. Like, cause I didn't okay. actually work for, I worked for a company that worked for a company that worked. And on some jobs, I worked for a company that worked for a company that worked for a company that worked. For... But yeah. All right. So yeah. it's at that point, they don't even know what they're paying for. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and when I, I worked for a major, uh, uh, entertainment company too, and they, same deal there. The, it's the weirdest thing in, in the corporate world. Cause I think some of it has to do with like, I don't know if they have to make minimum orders with, with these vendors or just, it comes out of this bucket. So you get this much, it comes out of that bucket. So you get nothing like, I don't know, but like, that's the thing with the corporate world. It's like, if it's. If it's in a certain bucket, bucket you can do anything you want to, but if it's not, then forget it. It's a or it's a major project that reached. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. One of the projects that I worked on was uh was the initial rollout of RFID to these stores, right? And we would come up to a store, and we would be working our butts off for the entirety of a week. And one time, midway through a project, one of the employees stopped us, and they were like why are you doing what what are you guys doing and i explained the whole thing to them and you know yeah we're putting in this rfid system it's going to help with inventory and yada 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 you had this whole spiel by that point this was like midway through the rollout and uh yeah it's going to help uh you know keep the store inventory just in time blah 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 and um and they were like okay yeah yeah okay great whatever stop in six months they're going to tear this store down i was like what they're going to tear this store completely down and rebuild it right behind us. <laughs> she was like, "Are you in the right building?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in the right building." And I called back to the back to the uh, the place. They're like, "It says that address." Yeah. Are you at that address? Yeah. Do the work. Yes, sir. <laughs> and so we installed a bunch of stuff in this building that was about to go away. Now I don't know if that was the poor planning on their part, or if that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, or why they had us do that. But they definitely, once it got to a Sometimes certain point. Sometimes it's just a, this checks a box that allows us to move our project plan forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's easier to just do the work and check the box than to try to ar argue it. And Yes. It, that retailer ended up uh, getting rid of that, uh, getting rid of that project entirely because it couldn't get uh, the companies to front the money to do all of the, uh, to do the RFID tags. Like, even though they got the price down pretty good, it was still way too expensive for them. What they were trying to get, get to was uh, uh, having zero inventory on hand. Like, that was their whole goal. And so, like, th what they wanted, like, in their perfect world, is a you know, a, 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 a carton full of bounty paper towels would be taken out onto the floor, right? They'd already have the numbers that were sold from the front end, right? So I'd say, okay, this box got taken out to the floor. We've already sold this much. Therefore I can extrapolate that we're probably going to sell X amount. So I will order that and, and browbeat the manufacturer until they have it to us next Tuesday. Exactly. Cause that's when we'll need the next load. And so like that, that worked out well, uh, I don't know, about a year ago or so, a bit more yeah. than a year or less than a year, I guess. I feel like we cut it close with 14 days on hand. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. No, that, well, that's what they were, that's what they were going for. They were going for, you know, the whole just in time thing. And, uh, they ended up, I think they ended up stopping the project altogether. If I remember right, they tried real hard for like two years. Cause I, I the year after I did a whole bunch of stores in Oklahoma, uh, in Texas, 
So uh, let's see, a little, little bit of housekeeping here. This is on behalf of the uh, Sin Shop. Uh, we're a maker hacker space located in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, you can uh, find out more about the shop by heading over to sinshop.org, sinshop.org. Uh, you can see that right down there in the corner, down there, I even pointed the right way, hot darn. Uh, or if you'd like to find uh, out more information about uh, upcoming events, including virtual ones just like this one, uh, you can go over to meetup.com forward slash sinshop and find out more. Um, so, okay, we, we gotta get back to like the main, the main topic here. Life yeah, on the road. Went off on the rails. Oh, we, yes. On the, yeah, on the road went off the rails. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen transport-wise? Like, like, how long do you think until we're actually traveling again? Um, I think it's going to be a while. I mean, there are some people that they still have to travel for work because that's, you know, the nature of their work. Insane. Uh, but a lot of people work from home now, so that's not an issue, or, or they're working someplace where the travel, travel isn't really a thing for their job. Um, yeah. I've not kept recent tabs on like how much traffic are going through the airports uh, recently. Yeah, I know it's picked up from what it was, but it's yeah, I think it's still nowhere near what it used to be. So, oh yeah, no, no, no doubt. Yeah, I'm. I'm I see ads all the time for like, you know, Hey, go to, go to Disney world or go to this place or go to that place, go to Hawaii, yada, yada. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sit in a plane for hours. No, <laughs> no way. Like I think that Hawaii was doing a thing where they wanted people to stay and work there. Yeah. Essentially it, it would be a, I'm going to work out of a, a hotel for like a month or whatever you got a really good deal on, on the travel package because they want you to essentially put money into the economy out there. Cause yeah. there's not a lot of, uh, tourism going on. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like, I don't know if Hawaii is still doing it, but you had to be where you got there and you were essentially in COVID jail for, uh, two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. They were pretty serious about like making sure that, that you stuck to it too. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, she has a, a, a studio apartment with her and her husband out there and she should go out there every once in a while. Cause I think there's like a rental property or something they have, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she, one, one was terrified of flying Ugh. out there. Uh, and then, you know, once they got there, then, then, you know, it was sitting in their apartment for two weeks, which I mean, on that, one hand, that can, that can get a bit much after a bit. True. Well, well, I'm when you're not allowed to leave, and if you if you do leave because your neighbors all know that you know oh you're supposed to be in in uh jail that that they will snitch on you so can't you go in the yard of the place or or is that I, I don't know what the deal is I, i'm pretty sure it's yeah you stay inside and, and that's and that's they, the they're end taking it. it pretty seriously as as they should have as they should absolutely yeah i i, I really wonder what this is going to do to to office space in general, like office space, office furniture, you know, like, cause I don't, I mean, I see, I see some, a lot of companies some, going uh, back. Well, go ahead. Companies are probably going to go back once things go back to normal. But I mean, I would see that, that some are going to re realize the, the benefit of, of people working from home and not having to sp spend for office space because while well, they've not had to, if they were smart, they, they downsized. Yeah. You know, because the past year. <laughs> right. Well, or, you know, if they were able to just not pay rent anymore, downsize that way, not even necessarily in terms of, of people, you know, people that were working, you know what I mean? Like not, not, not get rid of people, just get rid of the building. Yeah. You know, that's, I don't know. We'll see. I'm actually, well, I don't know. That's, that's going into, into politics land, but it looks like it seems as though things will get better. Is I guess where I was, what I was going to say. We'll see. We'll see. No, we did uh, want to talk about the uh, new Raspberry Pi uh, microcontroller yes, we, came out. Yeah. 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 Tell me about, tell me all about it. Uh, I mean, there's a new Raspberry Pi yeah. controller just came out. Yeah. It's a, a dual core, uh, arm cortex m0 i believe so it's not like 
the Raspberry Pis have typically been like a single board computer, but mm-hmm. this is more of a, their own line of like getting into the microcontroller series. So it's, yeah. it's meant for doing more stuff with like that and dealing with like IO and uh, uh, robotics and, and stuff like that versus the Pi, which is really in some aspects meant to be like a, a replacement or a computer for people that can't get computers uh you know and, and help with like education and stuff most uh microcontrollers they will have like uh for your io you'll have like just general gpio where it's like you can turn things on or off or or read input etc um or you know read an analog signal or or send serial or or whatever but there'll be like fixed pins like this pin can do this function uh so this is different as it's programmable io so you know if you i think one of the examples they showed was uh they made it so you could have the programmable io drive like uh the you know the rgb led strip and hmm. so instead of your microcontroller having to you know send all that data out uh and pause what it's doing while it's sending that data it was more you have the programmable io that can do that at least that's what from what i understood it was supposed to do and that's on this one here that's not you're not talking about the yeah that's that's it's a it's their own design of chips huh and it, what was it saying? You can program it in C and what was the other one? Python? Yeah, C and MicroPython. Okay. This is kind of cool, though. So, like, what would the difference... So, the, the, I guess the, it sounds like the primary difference between this and an Arduino is that this is going to have, like you were saying, that the, the ability to shunt some of the uh, input-output to a different chip and keep running? Uh, well, it's the same chip. It's just a, uh, like a subsection of the chip. But it's a programmable subsection instead of like a fixed subsection. So like on our Arduino, there's there's a thing that handles like uh, I squared C um, and, and doing that protocol. Uh, but if you had something new that you didn't have uh, an actual interface on the chip for, then you would have to do what's essentially called bit banging it, where you're taking clock cycles to cycle the 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 GPIO by just turning on and off really fast to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. This damn thing. There we go. So what you're saying is that that is uh, that's easier to so, do on this than it would be on like uh, it, it's more you have hardware that you can dedicate towards doing that function, so that way you're not spending your main CPU clock cycles to just handle I/O when you oh. could use it for other processing. Oh, okay, okay. So there there would be less lag basically of that like it um yeah uh, so a, a good example is take the early video game uh uh you know they were on like a 6502 processor mm-hmm. and it would be taking and using the processor to draw out the display and then at the end of this display like between frames you have like a blanking section and that was like the only time you really had to do your processing mm-hmm. is in that section where it wasn't drawing the screen because the process of drawing out the video took essentially all of the time that the, the CPU had to, to think. Okay. Right. So yeah. No, this, I would have this to. Is, so instead of having to do that, you can, it's like having a video card where you just send the video data out to the video card and it worries about drawing it and and keeping the screen up to date and then while that's happening then the cpu can actually do you know your game 
or, or whatever it is that you wanted it to do. So Gorgie's Gone Wild is asking, how is this different from programmable I.O. in a traditional computer? Well, traditional I computer, uh, you don't really have programmable I.O. Um, now, my uh, microcontroller, you, you, you also don't really have uh, programmable I.O. Like you have function blocks that you can assign to pins. Uh, but if you if if you're trying to do something that there is not a function block in the silicon to do, uh, then you're having to use the main the main CPU of the microcontroller to to do the work. I I've not looked into what's involved in doing it. Um, how it's been done before is like using like an FPGA where. Uh, you're actually programming hardware to to do uh, that I/O. I don't know how this is doing it. Um, I've heard seen some like assembly code or something, so it, it's probably not an FPGA. It's probably just a dedicated block in the the chip that can do the the I/O. Again, it's I I read the the quick blurb and and saw the video on it. I have not actually dug into you know, how it doesn't, I don't have one to see what it does. But from what I understand that that's one of this thing's unique, uh, benefits. I check that out. I wonder if that would make it, uh, able to handle, uh, music faster. You know, if you don't have to wait for, you know, if the CPU doesn't have to handle timing, I wonder if it's a thing where like the CPU can just basically dump all that off to that other chip, have it playback music and until something else has to happen you know like if I'm i mean yeah in theory you could like you could say um you know play a c note mm -hmm. and then it, that section of the io would would play a c note until you told it to stop playing a c note yeah hmm. instead of having to have a a, a loop that cycle the pin at however many hertz a c note was at yeah. And by the way, check to make sure that I haven't lifted my finger off the key or I haven't changed a knob or I yeah. haven't pushed a button, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I can see that working very well. Hmm. And for four bucks, each, each, each one of those is four bucks. Isn't that what yeah, I was from, reading? Yeah. That, that's the price I saw. So that's crazy. Any final thoughts before we head over to the post game and do pretty much what we did for the main show? We're still working on, on getting the, the shop built out. Um, we've okay. talked to a contractor today, uh, but don't really have, don't really have too much in, in updates. It's, it's, uh, yeah, moving forward is, as that's gonna be, I think once we actually get people in there working then, then it'll start to speed up, but we're, we're in the, the planning and, and, you know, have to talk to the city type of, uh, phase of the, the build out. So. Yeah, how's It'll be slow for a little bit, but yeah, how's that going? So right now you're in the middle of like drawing up. You're like, okay, here's what I want to do, and then you got to take it to the city and say, here's what we want to do. Yeah, so right, we have to meet with a guy that will write up what's there now, mm -hmm. because we're not sure that everything that's there is actually on the building plan. Oh boy! So we have to make sure that that. You know, everyone's on the same page and you know when the inspector comes they're like well why is this bathroom in the back that's not on our our drawing mm. we're not sure if it's on there or not uh, right. but just saying if that happens to be the case then you know that would be a big deal yeah unless we go about you know going through the process the way that you're supposed to do the process so because we want everything to be to code and, and, you know, above the board, et cetera. And so sure. we're not going to have any issues going forward in the future, but that does mean that you do have to run through those paperwork groups. Hmm. So how, how's that going so far? Like, so, well, I guess you, you just started the process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be cool, man. I can't, I can't wait for it to be done. That's going to be good. You guys have got, got, a lot of people working super super hard on it and uh 
and I, I, a lot of really good ideas are, are coming through uh, in everything that I've seen. And and uh, and it, actually, and if you would like to uh, check out the uh, the work as it progresses, like I said in the show intro, you can join our Discord, and uh, you can get to that by going to sinshop.org forward slash Discord, and you can find out more information about uh, building the shop. And if you're in the Las Vegas Valley area, uh, maybe not right now, but it, at some point soon, we'd probably love to have your help. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, in just a second, you're going to see me uh, with sideburns about this size uh, from six months ago telling you uh, what you missed. So here he is right now. Actually, it's the other way. Hi, I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour, make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sin shop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us build something, and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. We hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and we will see you there. One take. Not one take.